<laughs> no synchronicity on my end. Synchronicity by Bjork. Look it up. No. <laughs> uh, what is that? Who am I thinking of? System of the Down. Of a of down. A down? One System down. Of the down. It's just a down. Just like it's uh, Jimmy Eat World. <laughs> there is just one down. System of one down. Welcome System back to Jump on the Bat Wagon. Chop Suey. With Brian and James. Ja- With, Brian, uh, I'm Brian. Jabber Mason, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Yoppy dudes. Uh, we got a title. shirt. We got to stick to it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I don't think the Jabber Mason guy <laughs> t-shirt will sell quite as well, but it's I don't know. such an awful looking <laughs> word. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Every time I go So many GR. vowels in a row there at the end. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, if you've not listened to this show before, uh, <laughs> this is where we try at least to watch through the entire DC animated universe from start to finish in the con controversial air date, air date order. order that's where it's like the order they aired in is what that means that's controversy yeah it's like when uh you're a child and you Stop turn there. on the tv it's just when you're a child it's controversial <laughs> to be a child please don't <laughs> you'll get canceled uh but yeah human beings watch these in the far gone days of the 1990s in this such a fashion yeah yeah brian this Me. is his first time through the entire DCAU or any of the DCAU. First time through it. So this episode we're about to watch, it's a first for me. It's a first, but it's part, it's pew pew part three, perhaps. <laughs> I don't know. No, you named it. You named it before, and I think I have to stick to what you named it. Uh, it was pew pew part two for last time, and then next this time is pew pew whoops, we already did, oh, well, whoops, we did this joke already. <laughs> Is, is what the thing is. So I, I, think I do I like to, that. Yeah, I have to stay with that, I think. Uh, can uh, I ask you an unrelated question? Sure. Why does my name say Brian Manili and your name says guests <laughs> later? God damn it. I still didn't change it. Uh, the, I guess it's backwards in time now. I was just on the DCAU review podcast today talking about the best episode on Leather Wings. And uh, mm. I act, I realized that my guests later, it still said guests later. So, But this is my second time realizing it. But the first time the listener will hear it if you listen to both podcasts of me realizing it. So on the, when on tomorrow, when you listen to the DCAU review, you'll be like, damn, this was earlier. <laughs> so the answer to your question, though, is <laughs> on Sunday, we had a live stream of the entire Watchtower Database storyline, minus Zeta Month, of course. And of course. Uh, I, I had my name changed to guests later so that the Zoom screen would show that uh, when I had my camera off on the stream. It, it 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 was the whole thing. Don't worry that's, about it. That's pretty. That's pretty swick. Yeah. Um. Also, I'm I'm stoked. Can when when like, <laughs> are we up? Is the is like the week quarantine of not talking not about talking about Zeta. Yeah, it's over. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the quarantine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I am. I knew that Zeta month was gonna be a thing back yeah. when it was just. Potentially is eight a week? I don't know. It's been everything. But um I'm I'm so happy for everyone and uh <laughs> I sent a message to our, our dear listener, Tip Tapricot. Tip to Precut. Oh yeah, that was the best comment. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure you saw that at least. Yeah. 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 Uh it was just yeah, I I'm just I'm so stoked for everyone. Yeah. It, it's it's pretty funny to get to finally get to this point uh, where I can talk about it and because <laughs> it's been half uh, half people going like yes finally oh my god like that no way that you're doing this and then the uh, a couple people so far be like oh man I'm just so sorry that you have to talk about the Zeta project for a whole month <laughs> <whatever>. <laughs> is but, there anybody <laughs> besides me saying what's Zeta well that's the thing is we've been we've been laughing pretty good about like Oh, Brian's going to get to Zeta Project on the podcast finally. He's going to be like, this is what I've been waiting for. Or whatever. <laughs> it's going to be the best show ever. 
It is not as bad as I remember it being. I'll just say that. I've had to be doing all these videos on it, and it's like opening my eyes to like, it's not so bad. Hey, you shaved your facial hair. At least more than it was last time. You were complaining how (laughs) long it was. Oh, yeah, yeah, I did. But I just realized how much it's grown back since I shaved. This getting older thing is bunk. When you turn 100, you just got to shave your beard like every other day, and that's stupid. (laughs) I used to have it's to shave bunk. like once every two weeks, and now I'm like, oh, God, I, I already have to shave again. Yeah, in like 2010, I did No Shave November, <laughs> and I grew like four hairs on my face in the whole month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, well, maybe I should never do this again. If I did that now, like that's coming up soon, I don't think it would be pretty by the end of it. No. Uh, and I also have more gray spots now than I did last time we talked about it, so that's cool. It's because nice. I'm stressed as hell all the time, baby. That's good. No other way to live. We recommend you watch today's DCAU episode before listening to the podcast. To get the full experience out of our discussion, we're watching Robin's Reckoning Part 2 today, finally. We just had to get through that penguin episode randomly in the middle of them for some reason. Pen- penguin. Ping penguin. <laughs> uh, please, if you send in mail or leave a comment, do not spoil anything past this episode for Brian. I want him to go into everything a, a, a full DCAU virgin. Okay? A fresh little innocent little baby. Baby boy who doesn't grow facial hair. But <laughs> Man, those were the it's, days. It's too late. <laughs> yeah. Uh, your prediction last time was that this was the second part of Robin's Reckoning. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what your prediction is. <laughs> Batman's, rec- <laughs> Batman's Reckoning or something, I think you said. Batman's origin what do you, story. What do you think is going to happen? Oh, you said that you think... Uh, it'll be the cliche, like, Robin tries to go kill the guy and then Batman, no, you'll destroy yourself if you do the thing. So. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to, he's going to point blank it and he's going to like yeah. lay on his back and shoot a gun into the sky and scream. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's your prediction? Yep. Okay. I'm just making sure for our point system that, you know, that we've been doing this whole time on your predictions, uh, yeah. whether it's good or not. What are the credits on today's episode? We got the same as last time, writer Randy Rogel and director Dick Seabast. We got music by Peter Tomaszek this time. Uh, part one was Carlos Ooh. Rodriguez. Peter Tomaszek, we have this one before. Yeah, The Mechanic and Zatal. Oh, yeah, the Dan Reba uh, episode. The Dan Reba episode. An animation by Dong Yang with layout by Spectrum. Part one was just Spectrum. So Okay. They at least said... Hey, whatever layout is this time. <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah. We'll find out together someday, but it's not today. Are you ready for Robin's Reckoning Part 2? Otherwise known as Pew Pew Part... Oh, wait, Three. no, we did this joke already? Yeah, something like that. You can Sick. see it written in front of your face, dear listener. <laughs> we don't know what it says. It says something of that nature. Something else. Let's it's do Robin's Reckoning Part Two or something else. <laughs> <laughs> let's right, do let's this thing. Scooby do this shit, baby. Go. Ah! Let go of me, the circus boy. My little material witness. What are you doing here? No! Why you? Hey! I was just about to leave town because of you. Looks Mm. like I'm gonna have a change in travel plans. (laughs) Only place you're going is up the river, you scum. You creep! I hate you! I hate you! Uh, uh. Get away! The Circus Boy! (laughs) That's you. I'm referring to you. (laughs) And I'll refer to you by saying, hit the showers, dick. Dick. (laughs) (laughs) Dick jokes. It's a dick. He's called him a dick. He did! Never get get old. Just like Robin got uh, 10 years older by going to a diner. (laughs) 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 <laughs> <laughs> there's definitely some interesting robin uh age things going on yeah. there animation in this one not nearly as good as part one but uh no i, I noticed and, and laura made a comment as well um 
when the scene when they were fencing yeah like it looked like bruce was fencing on his like fencing get up yeah and then it looked like robin dick was uh-huh. just a scaled down exact same model <laughs> <laughs> yeah not not a, a child i heard her say that like just a shrunken full-grown man or, yeah, or, like, or the baby face. And, and not to mention that newspaper salesman or whatever magazine salesman who was you so, yeah he's gigantic <laughs> like, or or robin is smaller than we think i don't know maybe everyone is smaller than we think but that guy's normal size <laughs> <laughs> could be. everyone else in the show so far has been too small interesting interesting it's, premise yeah Tell me what happens in Robin's Reckoning Part 2 to the best of your Robin's recollection. Wow, that was good. <laughs> hey, I pulled that out of my ass just now. Good job. <laughs> uh, so we open where we ended on the previous one. Robin's trying to find Batman, who is apparently knows where Zuko is. The Batmobile Tony says, Zuko. find my iPhone is in use. And he says, fuck off. <laughs> he does, he does say that. Um, basically, the long and short is both in, there's another flashback and yeah. normal time. Um, but in basically in both of them, they're just trying to find Tony Zuko and apprehend him. And then they do. But the first time they don't succeed. The flashback they don't succeed because yeah. Robin goes ahead and falls in a river like a college dick. Yeah. Uh, though you know what? He, the he hits the showers, time... you might say. <laughs> <laughs> you might. I wouldn't. But you well, might. I will. I did. But the second time, boy howdy, let me tell you, they got him. Yeah. And Robin didn't choose revenge. He instead mm-hmm. laid on his back. Fired his gun into the <laughs> air you said, yeah. and said, "Yar." It's what you said would happen. Is what happened. It, yeah, because I'm really good at predicting things. Yeah, I mean, so far you've predicted perfectly every episode, and this was no exception. Yeah, I think uh, honestly, though, when, like that, like metaphorically speaking, yeah. this is exactly what I was expecting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it it was it wasn't a super like original way to to wrap it up. Like you kind of just guess that's, but at the same time, I feel like when I'm a kid, like that's the first instance of this kind of like trope or whatever that I've been exposed to. So it didn't feel like. Oh, they're just doing this thing or whatever. Like you'd exp- like everybody. Every show has some episode like this or whatever. Uh, you know, but like, what? What would? Is there anything you would have preferred to have happened? Like, do you? Can you think of like a better? <laughs> I don't know. Like, would you? What do you wish he'd done? Saw. Instead? But with Robin as the saw guy. <laughs> he puts Tony Zuko in some disgusting, horrific trap. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell is this? I'm Biff from Back to... I can't do it. <laughs> I'm John Travolta and Biff. What have you done to me? <laughs> and then it's Robin going, Hello, I my voice isn't suited for <laughs> this tape recording. <laughs> I'm uh, Lauren Lester. <laughs> you want to uh, play a game? Yeah, Zuko. He had a kind of a weird like accent going on almost when he pulls up to the dock and he's like standing over him. And he's like, "I've waited a long time." Like he's talking differently and not in just an intimidating way, but in like a different voice. I don't know how to explain it, but I it was it was not quite transatlantic. We've talked about yeah, that a bit on this yeah. show. It was pissed, Robin. When he gets really upset, he gets a different accent. Uh, the official synopsis. Robin heads off in hot pursuit of Tony Zuko, the thug who was responsible for his parents' death, despite Batman's forbidding him to do it. Some tricky detective work takes him to the crook's hideout at the old amusement pier, where Zuko has accidentally trapped Batman. Thanks to Robin's timely arrival, Batman and the Boy Wonder capture Zuko. In the process, Robin learns that Batman had tried to keep him away, not because he thought that Robin's emotion might get the best of him, but because Batman couldn't stand the thought that Zuko, who had taken so much from Robin, might have taken Robin too. Robin too. <laughs> reckoning. Yeah, I. It's I, it's basically what you predicted. There was there's a little bit of a, a lemon twist uh, at the end of like. Oh, well, just in case you thought this was the trope that it is, uh, it's actually because I thought he might kill you. I didn't want you to do that. It's funny that um, that's like a special thing. 
because yeah. you think that just every day Batman would hope that somebody doesn't kill him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's also a little bit like like Batman doesn't have much faith in Robin's like abilities or training or whatever. Like, mm-hmm. I can't let you get near the guy that maybe he's meaning it metaphorically, like not he, that he would actually kill him, but that he would take his, you know, innocence or something like that. I don't know. Don't say virginity. You've got it on your mind. <laughs> he's in. He's a college dick. I'm sure it's it's long gone. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It, it, it's a fine episode. It went by really fast. I feel like yeah, it was just kind of it over and done really fast. And it, it's not nearly as good as part one, but I still like it. I don't know. It's not nearly as good as part one. And now yeah. I think this is not the time for it. But it really has me thinking about the whole. Part one, part two thing. Part one, part two, and how we rate them. I, I think I'll just give in to the Dylan Pollock's uh, cue, Dylan Pollock cheering in the background, and just say that like <laughs> we can treat. I, I I didn't want to at the start because my thought was like, oh, it'll make for a funny, uh, like I don't know, more interesting method of rating top ten episodes if we only get to choose part one or whatever, or part two. Because, like, <clears throat> I can't think of an example of an episode that has a better part two, maybe. Maybe when we get to Justice League. But there's just, like, so far it's been very, like, strong part one. I guess I mean, Clayface. I your, Clay, say, your number yeah, three yeah. is Feet of Clay part yeah. two. I guess so. I guess that's My number two wrong. is Feet of Clay part two. But either way, one is always stronger than the other, and I feel like, at least so far, and I feel like we might as well just – give in and do it and in that case like do we want to not count this as like one of our shuffles we want to just have a freebie here to to reload it sort of like if you wanted to move something up or down based on its part one or two uh i don't know like so this is a real like it's funny because i feel like last time i was like so expecting this one to like give me the same like warm and fuzzies of the first one I was like, yeah, we'll just make it like you know, combine them. It, it, it makes sense. And now I'm like, I don't want, th- I don't want part two in my top ten. Yeah, well, so, <laughs> so I mean, so this continue. See, I don't hate this episode because it's it was all it was on the same Robin tape as part one. So I've just in my brain, it is one big long episode, and so I don't mm. like see it as any necessarily lesser. But watching it separated like this, it, it's noticeably. Worse, it, it's worse animation. Uh, the story isn't as strong. It just kind of like wraps up, happens. Uh, and, but I, so I just don't know if like, because then what if we finally do get to a a two parter or three parter or whatever that they seem all equally good and we're just back to back to back the same episode on the top ten and we're like, Ooh, what the hell? <laughs> what if we have the option to piggyback them? If we like it just as much or something, you just put it with itself or what? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm fine with that. <laughs> so that- in that case, like, I mean, we're jumping ahead quite a bit, but like, w- would this end up on your top 10, this this part two? No. Nope. Uh, in theory. No. Okay. I don't, I don't think so don't think either. So. As, compared as, a to standalone, the as a standalone episode, yeah. I don't think so. It if did it not was one, make you feel the feels, yeah. If it was one long episode, yeah, probably. Yeah, but I wonder if it would be lower. Maybe a little bit, yeah. Hmm. I it, part one is just so, like, I don't know, good. <laughs> it's just got so much <laughs> going for it, uh, and then this one is is just like tacked on, like a. Oh, also this the end. I uh, mean, like, there's some good twists. I didn't expect Batman to like. Get himself shot through a floor. I feel like he literally did just like mess up his knee when he fell. Because he's (laughs) got like a, like a, uh, whatchamacallit? A, 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 uh, what is that called? Splint. I'm like, splint. Thank you. It is weird that he's just like, obviously he knows they're in there. So he's up on the roof and he's creeping around. And he, I'm sure he can hear Tony Zuko go like, stop, listen. 
and then he just okay, I'm gonna keep walking. <laughs> yeah, and then he just, and then oh, there's a fucking guy up there. And he shoots everywhere, and then Batman goes, I think I'll step where the bullet holes were, and then he falls through. Like they don't really, there's no explanation for why he's so stupid on the roof. Uh, do he's we want to real take, stupid on the roof? <laughs> I know we're like jumping ahead, we're jumping all over the place, but maybe we sure. should just do Batman's usefulness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go for it. Why not? <laughs> Is it, well, that sounds weird to, to go straight into Batman's usefulness like that. But all the same, yeah. not good. <laughs> not he, good. He technically finds Zuko, but I feel like he knew from last episode. So did Robin. Yeah. The guy just told him last time, and then he went there, and there he was. Yeah. Robin's little uh, tracer thing is, and he Robin just has an assortment of impossible technology in this episode. <laughs> he yeah. has like a little phone tracer that he just magnetizes to the phone, and it tells him within like five seconds where the <laughs> place is, uh-huh. like faster than any cr- even current tracer would do, or whatever. And then uh, he also has his little like laser pointer sized bolt cutter laser thing, plasma <laughs> cutter. Yeah, that he just melts through the entire perimeter of a door with or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, Robin's usefulness is way higher. In fact, Batman would probably be dead if not for Robin. <laughs> yeah, he would have got shot in the carousel or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, By that guy who was a foot away from him and couldn't hit him. <laughs> that guy's usefulness is even lower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever random bald thug man, yeah. Um, what was uh, the the carousel? Oh, I said like Batman's battering is about to go in rhythm with the, the music because yeah, the- it's doing it's like do 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 and then do do. And I hear that every time it does this like flip, air flipping sound effect, exact same one two times in a row, and it's in the tempo of the music, and it's very bewildering i don't know <laughs> it's funny because i usually love that sort of thing <laughs> one of my favorite examples is kind of oddly uh in the movie me myself and irene uh-huh. and there's like it's when jim carrey jim carrey's character like flips his personality extraordinarily yeah. so and uh, he's a really oh, nice guy. He becomes song, an ass. Right? And yeah, there's a cake song playing in the background. Yeah. And there's this one, like, maybe two or three second clip where the song's playing for a good, like, maybe it's only 30 seconds, but still. And there's this one clip, and Jim Carrey is whistling, or his character, you know, is whistling that exact same part of the song. <laughs> yeah. And I just, like, it gets me every time. It's such a cool <laughs> choice to make. <laughs> Um, I I like it when that kind of thing, the character is somehow aware of the music or whatever, yeah. Yeah, but this was not one of those good (laughs) moments. Unless Batman, well, he he could hear that, it was diegetic sound. (laughs) Maybe it's like that problem that you and I have where you're like, you know, walking on tempo to songs or, you know. Batman's got to flip his bola around with (laughs) with the same, oh man, there's music, they got me. Oh my god. <laughs> Jamie, get us on track. Where are we? What are we supposed to be talking uh, about? Well, we're talking about Robin's Reckoning. Yeah. Part two. Do know? we want to actually talk about Batman's usefulness? Sure. Or do we want to put it there. or do we want to like put it like do we want to go in our order? Um yeah, let's do the cast. Let's talk about the cast. Yeah, there we yeah? go. Let's see. Kevin Conroy as Batman. Bob Hastings as Commissioner Gordon. Ephraim Zimbalist Jr. as Alfred. Rebecca Gilchrist as Chi Chi. Uh Chi Chi. Chi Chi. Uh, she's barely been in anything. So I wrote down everything she was in. Okay, you ready? Yes. Uh, she was in Happy Days. Oh. She played a character named Jan in Greece, live on Broadway. Sweet. Uh, that John Travolta was apparently also in. Oh. So I didn't realize that. Uh, hospital receptionist in Quincy M.E. Beverly in Who's the Boss? Pete's Mom in CBS Summer Playhouse. Popeye and Son which was a 1987 animated series that I've never seen or heard of. Yeah, uh, same. She just did a background voice on that. The California Raisin Show. <laughs> she played <laughs> Shirelle. 
uh, James Bond Jr., another animated series I was unaware of and am uh, upset exists. Uh, it's just a background voice. Camp Supervisor on Pinky and the Brain. Nice. Uh, she was a character named Jackie on Roseanne, the unauthorized biography, which was a television biopic about the marriage and divorce of Roseanne and Tom Arnold that I also didn't know exists and am un- unhappy exists. <laughs> uh, then she was in this, and then she'll be uh, two other DCAU random background voices in the future. <laughs> okay. And that's her entire career. So, Still better than mine. That scene where they're eating at the diner, I always want to eat whatever red-pink stuff's on Robin's plate. It looks delicious, like a pie or some leftover pie piece. <laughs> uh, Linda Gary as Birdie. I think that's the waitress. Mm. Uh, she previously played Constance Blaine in It's Never Too Late and Dr. Nora Crest in Two-Face Part 1. These are just mm. nothing characters that you don't remember. Uh, it, you may remember she played Aunt May in the Spider-Man animated series, Grandma Longneck in Land Before Time 2 through 4. Uh, she also, I somehow didn't write this down at the time, she played a character named Mother Goose in Duckman, Private Dick. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. We got it. Man. We got Charles Howerton as Lenny, some thug, our guy, maybe the pimp guy. I don't know. Uh, Lauren Lester as Robin. Joey Simran as Dick Grayson, age nine. Lionel Mark Smith as bus driver. And Thomas Wilson as Zuko. That's the cast. Lionel Mark Smith? I didn't write down anything for him because I didn't see anything I knew. Oh, okay. But you're welcome to look him up if you want. <laughs> he had a mustache you know some people have mustaches some people don't <laughs> <laughs> that is true yeah you want some trivs i want some trivs so joey simran is credited in part one as dick grayson age 10 but here is credited as dick grayson age nine in part two which has been a funny funny thing for trying to timeline this episode <laughs> oh. and also well mostly just timelining like robin's age and other things that connected to this episode or whatever uh, this episode puts a, uh, Robin's age to be roughly 18 or 19 while the end credits for the two parts contradict each other and sitting young Dick Grayson's age. Zuko states that nine years have passed since he was confronted by Batman. And I don't remember if we have noticed this for like past timeline stuff, because I, I have a, I have distinct memories of like the whole credits thing being a confusing thing for me and Maddie to try to figure out like where are we in present day what what year is this and that kind of thing but robin in the end of part one says like i've waited half my life so if he was nine or ten then he'd be 18 or 19 or whatever but or 18 to 20 (laughs) but the now i don't know if we've ever noticed that uh, tony zuko just says it's been exactly nine years (laughs) so so, i don't know (laughs) time to revisit i guess so Nine-year-old Dick has a portrait of Zuko from a wanted poster that he shows to several people. In some shots, the poster's borders are perfectly regular, as -hmm. if cut. In others, uh, they are irregular, as if ripped. And sometimes there's a combination of both. You look like you noticed that. I noticed that a lot. It was hard to not (laughs) notice that. I didn't really care to comment on it in the moment, because it was just, oh, sometimes it's that and sometimes it's that. Yeah. That whole sequence is interesting. You said that it looked like uh, it was boarded by sunrise or something. Yeah, yeah. Like the framing was very tilted angles cowboy and bebop. Stuff. Yeah, lots of crazy yeah. angles and stuff. Yeah. They have that like bird's eye view of the Batmobile after the uh, tracker fades into it or whatever. Mm-hmm. That was kind of interesting. I thought that scene would last a lot longer because it like fades into it. I'm like, okay, here we go. A little bit of time has passed. And then all it is is Batman going, not today, and turning off the tracker, and Robin going, God damn it, and driving away. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How did he know where to go after that? He's just like, don't worry, I'll figure it out, just like I did before, and drives away. And then he does figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> I guess he goes to that guy's house is how. Yeah, but, yeah, and he does the tracker thing. He has to hope that the last thing that that guy called like the day before was Tony Zuko and not the pizza place or <laughs> the front desk or anything. That'd be really <laughs> funny if he's like, 
he's a really good detective for thinking about this and he's a really terrible detective because like if <laughs> he like practice, actually like yeah. showed up and was like you know dominoes can i help you and he's like yeah. dominoes and he shows up there ready to, like, <laughs> yeah. kick ass. where's tony zuka <laughs> <laughs> he's like well what, what are you talking about mm-hmm. this is the gotham mcdonald's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's a very one track mind <laughs> yeah he's i need some pizza he said <laughs> There's a squirrel throwing nuts at my ceiling. Oh man, I was been worried. I was worried it would be raining today. It was, and now it's not. The end. Yeah, it was for me too. Anyway, one of Tony Zuko's thugs, when they hear Batman on the roof, resembles Carlos from Two Face Part One. Oh. the guy with the sunglass, like circle sunglasses, uh-huh. that kind of Manhattan looking character. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I I noticed that too. Like that was one of Two Faces, like or Harvey Dent's, like uh, it, was, it was Harvey Dent's, uh, like campaign manager or something like that. that <laughs> so that's once he got completely out of my brain. <laughs> when Batman first ties the wooden beam to his leg, it extends up past his knee. Later on the merry-go-round, it stops below his knee, which would make it useless as a brace. In the final shots of Batman hobbling toward Robin on the dock, retakes were called to fix the size-changing wooden beam problem as the DVD and Blu-ray versions are different sizes. <laughs> the, the one that the shot when he's holding Zuko and then you, you just hear like, Robin, and the camera goes really slowly over and down to the left and Batman's hobbling toward him with the stick leg. Right. And I'm, re- I'm really used to a very different version of that shot. Uh, where Batman has like an almost like up to his elbow, like crutch kind of sized <laughs> stick <laughs> on his leg. That was on the VHS that I had as a kid all the time. And then I, I don't know if the shot that we saw is a retake of that or vice versa. Cause there's been times where Dan Reba and such have told us like, Oh, I really hate the, the Blu-ray, you know, that cause they'll, they'll like, they'll run the episode then they'll notice problems and like retake a handful of shots so that all future airings of the episodes are fixed. Uh, but then when the Blu-ray people go back to like, you know, revise everything, make it HD, maybe like it's often they just pick the original versions of the episode. Like, oh, why would they? Why would the? Why would I not do this? Yeah, so, well, that's kind of what Dan was talking about on yeah. uh, episode fifty. Go listen if you haven't for whatever yeah, reason. With Bruce Wayne's eyeballs with and the eyeball, clapping and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so who knows like which which stick length is canon, <laughs> but I don't know. <laughs> uh, when the series was renamed The Adventures of Batman and Robin, which should be coming up any time now. Oh man, what? The opening title sequence that you're not looking forward to uh, used a majority of clips from these episodes. <laughs> oh. As, uh, Batman and Robin. There's a shot of Robin uh, driving up the bridge. Uh, and f- <laughs> shooting over the top, and the he like is in front of the moon for a second as he's like peeking. Mm-hmm. There's just this like big old fat piece of dust on the moon, <laughs> and it then when they reuse this that shot in the intro to the new version of the show, it you just see that every opening. Oh god! And, and I, so I'm just <laughs> like I all, I'm like waiting for it every time when he's jumping over. Like oh, there's that big fucking piece of dirt how did they not clean that of all things it's so noticeable you know (laughs) but it's almost like heartwarming to me like yeah the dirt's still there good (laughs) uh there's a chance that i wouldn't have noticed that (laughs) well now you will forever (sighs) i have to bring you into my world brian i guess that is the whole point of this podcast (laughs) you must notice the moon dust (laughs) (laughs) uh a complete aside did you happen to see jupiter and its moons the other day Two days ago no. from recording. Oh, was I supposed to? I didn't know anything about this. It's like the closest Jupiter is to Earth in like some amount of decades, oh. and with the positioning of the sun like directly behind us, uh, like you could see Jupiter and its moons just with a pair of binoculars. Damn. And I whipped out my like kind of crappy uh, telescope and was like, "Oh, that's freaking Jupiter," and just the uh-huh. like crazy start you were sp- why didn't you tell me <laughs> i don't know it still might be visible <laughs> are, are there clouds there tonight yeah but it's it's already dark how am i supposed to do that you see it at night oh that makes sense <laughs> yeah. was what you said before <laughs> <laughs> robin's hair as a child was based off the original comic book art his little like curly q bang things oh or like how his hair was in the 40s 
Originally, the second part of the story arc would include a flashback toward the end, involving Bruce make young Dick swear a candlelit oath to uphold the law if he would join him. Oh, there would also what? be a scene in yeah, <laughs> there would also be a scene in which he appears in full Robin costume for the first time. But Tim and Paul Dini, uh, that sounds like Tim Dini is the other guy. Uh, cut this for time constraints. <laughs> Dini has often admitted that he wished they would have used more of young Robin flashbacks to show his beginnings and growth into the teenage Robin of today. Uh, we finally did get to see Dick's original Robin costume complete with elf-like winged boots and lack of pants in May 2004's <laughs> Batman Adventures Volume 2, Number 12, which is a tie-in comic to the show. But yeah, the, I mean, for forever, you just see this Robin costume. And eventually, you see one earlier version in the Batcave, uh, and then you, but you never see like him f- first put it on or whatever. But this comic flashback has him with his same little like curly bangs, <laughs> and he's in the like you know '60s looking costume basically. So all dick, funny. no pants. <laughs> all dick, <laughs> all Grayson. <laughs> The oath-swearing scene uh, would be used briefly in a dream sequence in the out-of-continuity out of Teen Titans show, the episode Haunted. Oh. There's, Robin's having, like, a nightmare thing, and you see a very quick pan of, like, the Grayson's fly, f- falling, <laughs> the falling Grayson's, and then, uh, <laughs> then the, like, a bat cave wall with, like, Robin putting his hand on a book and, like, other hand up and oh stuff like God. that. Oh, my God. It's a very weird thing for Batman to make a child do. Yeah, it's a little culty. <laughs> I, I don't, I also don't love the fencing scene end of the scene where they're, like, wrestling and it's a little bit <laughs> yeah. uncomfortable. I was looking to you on the Zoom call thinking, like, oh, he's going to look down at me and giggle, but then you didn't. No, know, it was. that was because Laura was there. It was just too, it was pretty uncomfortable as it was. I'm like, I'm just going to let that go. Now you're gonna get it, and then he like tackles him and holding him down from behind and stuff. It's yeah, very, yeah. very not great. But no, let's try to ignore that. Uh, near the end of part two, I was wondering if you would catch this, but you didn't say anything as it happened. Uh, when Robin skids on his bike, the combination of the pose and the electricity coming off the motorcycle is a recreation of a scene from Akira. Akira! <laughs> he um, did the slide. Wow. Everybody does the Akira slide. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, is it like going under the truck? Is that what you just said? No, it's when he gets to the dock. He drags Zuko and then he lets go and then he does this slide. Oh, the yeah. Dock. yeah. I, you know yeah. what? I think I, that wasn't registering because I had a that's not how that works. <laughs> Oh yeah, with the motorcycle ignition or whatever. The right? throttle. Yeah. He so he yeah. was holding on to Zuko with his right hand and like yeah. steering with his left. But motorcycle <laughs> throttles traditionally, the throttles on the right. So you're vroom vroom when well, you twist your your wrist hand thing. Like that's what make go. But you can't make go if yeah. holding bad guy with your right hand. But this is Earl Cooper's spare bat cycle. <laughs> so who knows how how that works. <laughs> I guess there's a. Um, this- it's got turbocharged piston peepers or whatever the fuck he was saying. In the- <laughs> <laughs> turbocharged piston peepers. Yeah. yeah uh, exactly. To all of my gearheads out there, you're welcome for James's turbocharged piston peepers. <laughs> I'll retroactively name that episode that. <laughs> <laughs> turbocharged. <laughs> I'm quoting how stupid it was in the episode. Uh, Give me a break. Turbocharged <laughs> piston peepers. I'm going to write that on the wall right, be- right below Ashley Touchin' is Australian. Or beside it. Ashley Touchin' is Australian. Is- Turbocharged jalapeno poppers. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Last thing. Last thing. The last music thing. played in the diner. This is a trip I almost told you last time, but it, in part oh, one. Oh, right. Not, the music played in the diner where Dick and Chi Chi eat is the same as from the Stacked Deck Club in Almost Got Him. Oh. Same jazz music or whatever. Well, I think that comes up uh, in an upcoming episode as well. I think that comes up in a Jordan Blumen's Musical Minute. Oh, probably. <laughs> I sure hope so, or he's completely failed as a Jordan Blumen. Oh, no. I guess we'll find out soon. We uh, we did <laughs> we did Ratman's usefulness. Was there any keen effects? We didn't actually do his usefulness, other than saying. Oh, I guess we didn't rate it. Yeah, uh, I'll give Batman Batman himself. I'll give like three, maybe two and a half, uh, uh, size changing wooden <laughs> splints out of ten. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna give him a solid two um, merry-go-round horses giving. Curious looks. 
Yeah, they were very like, oh, oh. whenever they, they would cut to them, and they got like, whoa, fuck. <laughs> I like that they were like, yeah, me too, guy. I like that they reused that shot with, with like the lights yeah, coming back the up again. They're on. like, this is too good. We gotta, we gotta reshow this horse. <laughs> And then Mary go around going at like 50 miles an hour, and then Batman turns it up <laughs> to the point where it starts smoking. I'm like, how does it go any faster than, oh my God. This is fine. I think the only uh, good thing about the less than great animation this time was uh, uh, Tony Zuko's eyeballs. <laughs> he was Just popping right out of their sockets. <laughs> he was on something. I, I've never noticed, like, I mean, it makes total sense, it's nine years later or whatever, that he would look a little bit older in the present day than he does before. Yeah. Uh, but he looks, like, significantly, like, something happened to him. <laughs> he's, like, he's seen some shit. I he's don't know. seen some shit, yeah. He looks just like an, uh, an angry, like, full-figured man when he, like, cuts that rope. Yeah. And now he just looks like some deranged lunatic. Yeah, he's got like two two face eyeballs, like the big ones, <laughs> yeah. and then he's he's got like afterward he's been hit with like just a, a pinch of the Joker's uh, 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 what's it <laughs> laughing oh, sword fish. swordfish gas. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I <laughs> he's just he's a little he's a little unhinged. Yeah, I mean, I guess it, maybe it's supposed to be connected to like. I've been looking over my shoulder for a decade, you know, this fucking guy. I guess. <laughs> but everybody is. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I guess I guess it's kind of weird to think about how either Tony Zuko, you know, he almost got arrested by Batman in the past, but he got away. Did he just stay in Gotham City for the next nine years hoping that Batman wouldn't catch him again? Or did he come back to do something new and just, oh, shit, I fucked up. They know where I am. I think he came <laughs> back because he, I think he had some passing comment about like, oh, you you come back for this long and then he's. Okay. See, I miss things because I'm, I'm stupid. Robin. Oh, nice Robin. <laughs> Nice Robin statue, bird, bird Robin that uh, that some handsome fella got you. This is the eighty ninth from the last. I I did good. Number twenty nine eleven of three thousand. Someone's got number three thousand. I want number three thousand. I'm sorry. We can return it. I mean, this is pretty cool though. Keen effects. <gasps> um, <laughs> the cracked out bat spotlight <laughs> oh my god yeah well, it's not necessarily a cool thing though <laughs> a keen thing uh yeah i mean like there's it's a really really long uh little sequence there of <gasps> maybe i should have yawned into the microphone for that moment <laughs> that's the sound that batwing makes <laughs> uh just and all the criminals going whoa fuck let's get in there hide hide and then, yeah, there's just like a, a rolled up tortilla <laughs> moving through the street. They're like, oh, that's a light, I think. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then Robin looks up and there goes, the Batwing's moving so much faster than it indicated before. As soon as we looked up at it, it's just yeah. <laughs> through the sky. <laughs> well, the thing, I was like looking at the spotlight on the ground and it was just kind of like, yeah. yeah, did, did, and it was just yeah. like the light illuminated so little and so haphazardly that's like he could homeboy could have just stood still yeah <laughs> yeah the whole uh the bat wing it, it, it seems like it's a light coming straight down out of it so the bat wing is just like tilting wildly on his <laughs> yeah. axis to try to <laughs> to try to look anywhere i also have always found it weird that the bat wing exists like that early on in batman's career or whatever like this is like pretty pretty much like the start of things for him or whatever and he's just like i'm gonna build a fighter jet now do you think and and i hope nobody like this is the time period where nobody like believes in him or whatever like he's he's a myth oh he doesn't yeah really exist also he's got a big ass plane all the time <laughs> like well, maybe he only uses it for those situations or i don't something. know but like know. everybody was fleeing so they knew it was yeah. him coming so yeah they like... knew it was batman <laughs> yeah we went from last episode where batman was like, yeah, all the crooks are so terrified because they they don't truly like they've never encountered him before or whatever. They don't know if he's real. And then in this, he's just like, oh yeah. By the way, he flies a plane around <laughs> looking for bad guys, uh, 
every Tuesday. <laughs> Sorry. Do you think it was a chicken and the egg kind of situation? Like, do you think he got the bat wing first? And he's like, oh, that kind of looks like a bat. Huh. <laughs> yeah. Or he he's only scared. No, criminals are only scared of him because they know him as like plain man. <laughs> <laughs> Giant light spotlight plane man <laughs> no it's batman damn it that doesn't look like quite like a bat i don't have know you, have you seen a bat man <laughs> yeah man oh i get it now. <laughs> any i guess the kira lightning thing is like the only actual keen effect there i the moon dirt <laughs> the moon dust. <laughs> i don't know yeah no not much not much no everything was pretty standard and bland compared to the like part one had so much good lighting and ca- camera work and character uh, poses and stuff yeah. and this one just was like a it wasn't like an acom it wasn't bad but it was just a uh, it just kind of happened yeah <laughs> I don't know. there's that one good standing pose of, of batman post split oh, yeah. where he's got his hand he's on like his, leaning on his hips yeah but like on his middle thigh He's just kind of got like a lean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. the, I think the sunrise at the end. Sunrise. Ba-da, 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 ba-da. <laughs> Why didn't they do this? The first sunrise appearance uh, is like on like a layer or whatever you would call it, like above Batman and Robins. So their heads are just being cut off <laughs> by the sun sun coming up at the end. Oh, my God. I didn't notice that. <laughs> yeah. uh, books or hip hop, would you say? Mm, books. Yeah. And like, but not like last time's books. No, this yeah. is like a like a self help book that you intend to read, but you don't. I was gonna say it's kind of like a, a book that your English teacher is making you read, but you oh. don't necessarily want to. How yeah. about ooh ooh ooh? ooh. <laughs> Can we like somewhat split the difference ish? Uh-huh. How about it's a book <laughs> that your mom buys you? <laughs> because she thinks and then if she doesn't see you reading it she'll be disappointed yes <laughs> <laughs> okay it's I'm that good book with that. Yeah. i think I've and got so one we're not placing this by itself on the top 10 so we're going to keep going with our normal yep. ways of doing things i, I yeah. guess okay with the, with the <laughs> sorry option, dylan pollock take the cheer back you don't get the cheer <laughs> but with the option to dylan pollock it yeah in the future <laughs> i guess that okay let's just make that the rule like if we want to if we want to only put one we can and but if we want to combine them and then we can also do that because we're make we're doing whatever we want to you know it's our podcast Podcast. and we can make the rules i hit the wrong button i have little labels on the buttons so when maddie was over for the stream they could see exactly what each one does and every time that harvey bullock would come up on a video they would press the hydra's back button nice good job maddie <laughs> yeah. i'm proud good of you job, maddie. uh i think that's it i think we're done talking about this episode <laughs> <laughs> so i think well let's move on to the yappy mail yeah oh my gosh uh Keen has been having problems. Yes. I'm so sure you heard. La- I, I want to apologize to anybody that sent us mail last time that it might have not gotten through. Uh, we had a lapse on the Watchtower database and legacies of the DCAU websites where they just expired, the domain expired, and nothing told me. So I had to find out by someone commenting on, I think, the Batman and Harley Quinn video maybe being like, is the Legacies website down? I'm not up to speed. And I went in there and then noticed both of them just were on the, like, buy this domain for this much money kind of page. Not, like, a serious thing, but just one of those, you know, like, default, this isn't an actual website I missed pages. my opportunity to milk you dry. <laughs> yeah. You could have bought LegaciesDCAU.com and changed it to, like, you know, Tub Girl or something. Brian Ma- <laughs> Nope. <laughs> But yeah, anyone anyone that tried to send in mail to the Watchtower data, the podcast at watchtowerdatabase.com uh, might not have gotten through. So if you don't hear it today, uh, feel free to send in mail for uh, Birds of a Feather whenever you can, and I'll I'll do my best. Uh, but yeah, this is from Keen Machine, Birds of a Feather. I think I think the original came through, and then a retry of the original came through from the original, and then a retry today came through. So I'm only going to do it once, yeah. but we'll try. We'll find out together <laughs> if it is all the same thing or different things. Okay. This is for Birds of a Feather. Greetings to the distinguished Jim Jimotheus and Brianalis. Brianalis. 
<laughs> okay. As you can see, it's hard being rich. Appearances to uphold a family legacy to protect, not to mention having to feign friendship with villains so they will be unwitting entertainment at your party. Truly, the way of the wealthy is weary indeed. Indeed. Thankfully, I was able to get an expert on the topic to elaborate for this week's voice message. If he's not too busy watching the latest sensation on television, keep it keen. Tonight's episode of Yappy Court has been cancelled <laughs> as the two parties agreed to settle out of court. Oh. In its place, oh, please shoot. enjoy Raiding Smasher, Airheaded Aristocrats. <laughs> Airheaded Aristocrats, brought to you by the producers of The Poor Are People Too. <laughs> Honestly, they really just let people say whatever they want these days. For example, why would anyone say that this episode isn't great? I mean, it's the debut of Pierce Chapman, socialite, <laughs> friend, better than everyone, except Veronica. <laughs> it's not my fault the penguin ruined her party. No, wait, it kind of is. <laughs> oh, anyway, Keen Machine told me to say that this is his favorite penguin episode of Bataz, and I couldn't agree more. He also told me to say, keep it keen, but I'm not going to do that. Ta da! <laughs> Bataz. God, that was a unfortunately way too good impression of that guy. Yeah, yeah, that was uncomfortably <laughs> accurate. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I, I look. I hope that uh, Yappy Court gets another episode. But I also understand if you know I things know. get lost sometimes in in the broadcast place, <laughs> Bro broadcast place, whatever it's called, broadcast TV place. make TV make house. Tip Tapricot, Contemplations of the Week, Birds of a Feather. Wasn't able to say in the recording for time, but of but also congrats on the Harley Quinn video, both of you. Yeah, hey. both of us. <laughs> Brian did help a lot with that. You guys and everyone at WDB put in such awesome work, and it shows. I'm so glad you finally got to share it with us. I am also glad. If you're a listener that has not watched the Batman and Harley Quinn, will it canon, please go do so, because it it's good. I'm going to go watch it. No, wait, not you. Oh, everybody but me. Yep. All right, here we go. Here are some contemplations of the week on Birds of a Feather. I like that Penguin is just as not liked in world as he is to us out here. This version of him, at least, I know and have seen him be really fun, just not here. The animation seemed extremely wonky in the mouth department. Uh, this episode, very, just weird. Um, how did the umbrella gun get cocked back when there's nothing to cock? Like, he didn't use both hands, there's no hammer, I don't know. Um, weird that the crook and Batman were straining when Batman was pushing a loose chain at him. I feel like the prop might have been changed because they animated a struggle when there really shouldn't have been. Um, the opera scene did make me laugh. Penguin, your voice is beautiful. He... Took her was one of my favorite line deliveries this episode. The sewer hideout and the duck made a reappearance. I've got a duck in my basement. Yeah. Um, I got distracted sometime after. We can still be friends and looking back to see a flaming dragon flying around was something. And merch suggestion, a certified yappy dude pin. Uh, other than that, I don't know. I didn't. Th th this episode's kind of forgettable. Um, it's not that bad, but oh, whatever. Uh, stay yappy. Certified yappy dude. I like that. <laughs> yeah, I not just the yappy that. dude logo, but yeah, like a little pin. Yeah, I like that. Uh, yeah, I, I like he took her. Oh, or whatever. <laughs> as he just faints. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh God, I got a, I, I got a Chawini. Yeah, that's a dog. On a, he's on a bender. Kimmy is back in Canada, so I got Chawi. Oh, yep. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll show you the uh, Will It Cannon episode next time we're together because, like I said, you can watch like ninety nine percent of it. There's a, I wrote down an actual note on my phone. I watched through the video and wrote down two specific <laughs> uh, like five second time codes that you're not allowed to see. <laughs> <laughs> oh damn! So, okay, yeah. sweet. Yeah. Anyway, uh, next is Keen Machine Forward Delivery Status Notification Delay. <laughs> yeah, it's the same one. Uh, Scotty Cameron, the best Penguin episode by default is Before Pew Pew Part 2. Uh, <laughs> hey, Yappy Dudes, great episode as usual. I like how people have been saying, uh, like, oh, this is the best Penguin episode. Like, oh, it's not a high bar to have to. <laughs> yeah, fair. Like, yeah, I, I guess maybe I agree. I don't know. <laughs> 
In preparation for the next episode, I watched Birds of a Feather, and I must say it's better than the previous two Penguin episodes. I generally like the idea of the Penguin reforming and changing his ways, even if he does so because of a prank pulled on him by Veronica and Pierce. I generally like seeing how differently Penguin responds to Bruce Wayne and Batman. In fact, the interaction between Bruce and Penguin was a highlight of the episode. This Agreed. On the balcony or whatever, yeah. Even if it's inconsistent with most characterizations of the Penguin and his attitude toward Bruce Wayne. Yeah, the the Batman cartoon, the Penguin is like comes from a similarly rich family to the Waynes, and so they're like childhood uh, like enemies or whatever. Oh. I, I can't remember exactly what it is. Interesting. But there's something with it, yeah. Uh, that being said, I must say we don't spend a lot of time with the reformed Penguin. It's very short-lived. I feel like the episode should have started with the Penguin being released from prison and cut the opening heist out. We already know the Penguin's a criminal. We don't need an opening heist to establish it. I guess that's kind of true. Fair point. And you know what I forgot to do? We drop what we drop. Our weekly I'm sorry, oh, yeah. Kimmy. So I don't know how I did that. Comment box Worst. There sure was a lot. Now Jamie's mad. Too bad we're all. At least I am. Just Dylan Pollock. I actually forgot to put the new version in the thing, so that's the old version. <laughs> is it? <laughs> yeah. It sounded louder. <laughs> it is. Uh, no, it's the same. Oh my I god. I forgot to put the new one in. I'm sorry, everybody. I don't know how I didn't press the button, but I didn't press the button. We are just both rather um, tired tonight, I think, and that's fine, isn't it? It's okay. We're just trying to entertain millions right. of people. We're just all millions that listen, all the millions of listeners. Also, I think given that Robin's Reckoning was produced before The Man Who Killed Batman, I'd say it was Zuko who used the name Sid the Squid before Sid actually did. That it was more of a coincidence that Sid used an alias of Tony Zuko's, I guess Ooh, that does. There's some good points up. coming out in the mail tonight. Yeah. Uh, Scarlowy one jump on the mechanic wagon. This is an MP3. I hope that's better. Yes, it is. All right. Hello, listener, and welcome to Jump on the Mechanic Wagon. I'm your Woo! host, Carl Lowy One. In this podcast, I will talk about episode three of Earl the Animated Series. <laughs> it just the keeps going. Doctor, part two. If you forgot what happened last time, there was a basement, a penguin, an <laughs> Earl, and a big bird man. Now, part two. Always. Earl, curious about what the penguin was doing in the basement, decided to investigate. Earl went into the basement and saw Oswald getting money out of a crate. I guess he did it. He hid it there after a robbery or something. <laughs> it doesn't really explain that. And then the birdman came down into the basement. Terrified, Earl decided to hide behind a crate. Somehow, neither Oswald or the bird saw Earl. <laughs> On the bird, Oswald said, Have you been living here? You beautiful specimen? The bird then said, Yes, Bacaw! <laughs> Oswald then says, Come with me. I will find a better home for you, beautiful. Ping. The bird the, the bird looks lovingly at Oswald and then leaves the basement. As they leave, Earl hears Oswald say, I think I'll call you Mr. Wing. Oh, no, it's it's an origin story. This was definitely my favorite episode so far, but I have one thing to say. Mm. James, how did you forget to mention this episode during the BTAC coverage? Anyway, see you next time. Same PP time, same boo-boo chat. <laughs> this, yeah, it's a character from the Adventures Continue uh, comic from the last couple of years. It's this giant bird man named Mr. Wing that the penguin has is like a henchman. Oh. <laughs> it was like the breakout like star of the comic he, he was like the only good thing <laughs> about the comic the only thing that we latched on to and actually loved about it because he's just this ridiculous like it's he speaks english he's just this giant bird man mr wing it's good mr wing okay now you know i'll show send you a picture of mr wing too. nice uh let's see we are down 27 points in canada tv reviews i just thought i'd let you know canada why those canadians come on uh, Keen Machine Robin's Reckoning Part 2. Greetings, Brian and James. Hey. Since we're sharing awkward childhood gift reactions, I remember getting two BTAS man bat figures during a birthday and proclaiming to both givers, don't worry, I'll keep yours and return the other one. I suppose it was a brilliant plan, as how would they know which one was returned, right? But ultimately, I ended up keeping both of them, and I still have them today. <laughs> yeah, I've got... Like this one? <laughs> Is it this one? Because I have it right here. Wow. Brian can see it. Where's mine? Oh, Just kidding. Um, I don't want one. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't think you do. Uh, <laughs> I, had to, I had to talk about On Leather Wings again today with the DCA review, and it was so great to talk about such a good episode. 
I uh, have to say I'm blown away by the Yappy Court praise. It was only possible with the help from Jordan, Dylan, and Tip Tapricot. While this case has come to an end, I wouldn't be surprised if there are future issues requiring official judgment down the road. Also, I had some potential merch ideas. I think a shirt that says, What's the Zeta Project? Or perhaps, Ask me about Batman's origin story. Could be really hip-hop. Or maybe books. <laughs> you decide. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of good merch ideas coming through. Attached is a reenactment of me listening to last week's episode. Not my greatest work, but you know how it is when Mercury's in the microwave. Don't worry, it's short, unlike this email. Keep it keen. <laughs> the following is a reenactment. Delivery incomplete. There was a problem when delivering your message. <laughs> the very next day. <laughs> Yeah, we don't have a keen machine message unless it comes in like 10 minutes after we stop recording like it has before. <laughs> God, my message still didn't send. There's got to be some way that I can get through to them. I am here. 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 I think it was Jordan Bloom. No, still not working. Okay. Yeah. Tom, I'm gonna check one more time that we didn't get a King Machine one, and we didn't. Okay, sorry, King Machine. I, just, I hope he, I hope he didn't try to send it later because it's not in here. That yacht, that one small extra <laughs> yacht, couldn't put it over. But hey, at least Robin's Reckoning Part Two was great, right? I'm out of time. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Thank you. <laughs> it's hard to express how much I appreciate. The production value of your voice message. I just, I'm always you'll amazed just, have... by the creativity. I'm like, yeah, yeah. how does any one person come up with so many very ideas? <laughs> yeah. I suck as an artist. Well, I guess we should have Keen Machine take over the podcast. Sorry, Dylan. I mean, I'd listen to a Keen and Dylan podcast. Yeah. Dylan Pollock says Yap Mojo, which is not a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to assume it's a watch mojo. We'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Yacht Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top five Keen Machine voice messages from Jump on the Batwagon. Number five, Keen makes amends with Dylan Pollock. Dear Dylan Pollock, I do apologize that I did not recognize you in my first voice message. That was my severe lack of judgment, and I sincerely hope that you can accept this apology and that we can move forward because you're a very important part of this very important podcast. <laughs> Number four. That's you laughing. The very keen episode featuring Keen Machine. Say, dear listener, are you wondering what you can take away from this week's special episode? Number three. Is anyone out there? <laughs> Gr- greetings, James and Brian. <laughs> keep it, keep it keen. <laughs> Number two. What's real? To a bright future, as we all remember. To keep it keen. <laughs> Before we get to number one, here is an honorable mention. Hard dash. More like hard cracked us up with that one, Keen. Today I am a little more machine than I am keen. <laughs> and our number one pick. This week on Yappy Court. This unique situation is not beyond the scope of Yappy Law in any fashion. <laughs> if you like this list, Make sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell for notifications. <laughs> okay, so it, I'm pretty sure that was Jizzle. <laughs> and that's, got, that's the best thing ever. Why? I st- can you guys fucking stop, please? No, no, keep going. This is amazing. And I think it is, too, because Dylan posted a thing of her uh, giving yeah, some speech, on, on his, that, on yeah. his, at least on Instagram, uh, on yeah. his stories. And I was like... That's what she sounds like, and I think that's yeah, what I she sounds like. We she had been in one voice message before, but I I hadn't like oh. I hadn't taken her to be a like professional speaker or whatever. But I, now I now I do now I know. Yeah, no, she needs to start doing some voice acting, like the take over for Watch Mojo <laughs> <laughs> or this podcast. <laughs> I'll, I think yeah, Kane yeah, and Giselle, that would be one. Sorry, Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's just not. Let's everybody except Dylan get out of here. Uh, I love you, Dylan. Uh, last one of emails, anyway. Scotty Cameron, the olive green carpet in your grandpa's attic. Now, time for pew pew part two. Hey, yappy dudes! Great show as always. It's funny you had a voicemail about the episode of the Batman Matter of Family. 
because that was the first telling of Robin's origin story that I had seen. I remember the first airing and it being gut-wrenching. Watching that prepared me for all the story beats of Robin's origin story when I saw Robin's Reckoning. With that in mind, I still found Robin's Reckoning a better telling of Robin's origin story than Matter of Family because it fleshes out the father-son relationship between Batman and Robin better. Both are solid tellings of Robin's origin story much better than the versions in Batman Forever and All-Star Batman and Robin the Boy Wonder. I'll agree with you since I don't know any of those things except for Batman Forever. <laughs> Let's go to voice messages, anchor.fm slash batwagon. You can send in a voice message. There are two. We have Jordan Blumen, Musical Minutes slash GCN. Here it is. It's GCN, Gotham City News with Jack Ryder. Tonight's top story, something went down at the abandoned amusement park outside of town. Not sure what happened because the police won't tell me <laughs> anything. <laughs> Damn it, Gordon. <laughs> now over to the music. Once again, the importance of silence in this episode, uh, the, the abrupt dropping out of the music when the Batwing flies over and mm. frightens all of the criminals into hiding. I thought that was very effective, <laughs> letting us just focus in on the kind of eerie sound effect of that plane. Mm -hmm. Also, I'm not sure if this is meant to be Robin's leitmotif or just the motif of his trauma mm -hmm. and need for revenge, but this... Da, 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 da. Yeah, I got it. It was a very impactful melody throughout the episode. It was on repeat, yeah, in like every Robin scene this episode. I was thinking that too, because I don't think that's in any other episode, so I don't I don't think it's like a Robin theme, but there isn't really a Robin theme that I know of. So. They're missing out. Prime opportunity. Dylan Pollock, I used up all 60 of those precious seconds this week. Yeah, you did. <laughs> It's time for the Thoughts of the Week with Dylan Pollock on Robin's Reckoning Part 2, or Zuko should make like a tree and get the hell out of here. <laughs> hey there, Brian De Palma and Jimmy Stewart. I want to say first that I appreciate uh, Commissioner Gordon's very realistic police answer, that if Zuko gets out of town, they're just not going to catch him. Yeah. There's only like three detectives on the force, Bruce. What do you really expect? <laughs> I do feel bad for Zuko's henchman, Dolan, that Robin breaks into his apartment. He's going to have a tough time explaining to his landlord why he needs a new lock, door frame, and door because they were all melted through. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not going to be able to do that realistically. <laughs> Let it be known henceforth also that Tony Zuko really hates rats. Uh, to yeah. me, I would give this two-parter five impossible to jump drawbridges out of five. <laughs> and I particularly like the ridiculous rage-filled arm strength of Robin and the Akira homaging motorcycle slide. Ooh. Those are both chef's kiss moments. And the ending is particularly well done too. So let's get to the question of the week. James' favorite it's your part. Favorite part. Batman eighty nine made Joker the man who killed Bruce's parents. Is there a more significant bat villain you would want to see as Robin's creator rather than a one off like Zuko? No. <laughs> That's the answer. No. Hmm. I prefer it to be some uh, not costumed like super villain person. We talked about this last episode a bit. Uh, it being Two Face in Batman Forever. I I don't know. It just seems like it has more impact if it's like. Just like, oh, yeah, just some guy that was doing a thing, and it's not like a, you know, destiny or whatever that it would be like. The Riddler killed Robin's parents or whatever. I want it to be Sewer King. Oh, okay. That, yeah, I'll, I'll go with that. Can you imagine <laughs> Sewer King being like, I'm going to sabotage his parents? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I want it to be uh, uh, Nostromos. <laughs> Robin, <laughs> I'll kill your parents. <laughs> <laughs> he, said, he said to Dick Grayson... <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> okay, let's real quick let's let's do comments from the last episode. This is birds of a feather or the olive green carpet in your grandparents' attic. Bring it, uh, Ashley Touchin. To think, Wait, Ash Ashley Touchin. That he's Australian. Oh my god! To think they'd never be a good penguin episode of BTS. Well. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> you should have just talked about the Watchtower storyline conclusion instead. Not only is it superior story, it has 36% more basement references than this episode. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually kind of nice that this episode is the one that was sandwiched in between the Robin's Reckoning episodes. It makes you feel more like a quick pit stop than a massive detour. Uh, oh, and for everyone disappointed that we didn't get more Yappy Court, it actually makes perfect sense. Episode 2 is obviously attached to the second episode, Robin's Reckoning. Oh. So, as per usual, Fox adults are the ones to blame for the delay. <laughs> well, it wasn't, and that's okay. It doesn't need to be more. It's, it's, it's had its time, you know. Brian is getting really interested in how his pencil can make shapes on his webcam. Um, I'm listening. He's having a great time. Uh, uh, this is just ADD. It's at its best. Brian Manili as Brian, age nine. <laughs> <laughs> 
Look, I, I uh, can't just sit and not fiddle. That that no, I will I not it. be able to listen if I do that. I got it. I got yeah, it. You Kevin Ranky. I get, I think Birds of a Feather is one of my bottom ten episodes. <laughs> I don't really like it. Or I really don't like it. Uh, Penguin episodes aren't great, but this topped off by Pierce's grating voice. Sorry, Keen Machine. <laughs> that sound even bugged me as a kid when I first saw it. On another note, that lyrical penguin theme music has developed into quite the earworm. I even found myself subconsciously chewing to that infernal beat at one point. <laughs> What's happening to me? <laughs> I don't have much unique to say about Robin's Reckoning because I agree that it's one of the best stories around. I did always love that motorcycle grab and drag and will absolutely have it represented in my display of custom figures. Uh, thanks for pushing through the basement quality episodes, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good uh, ranking there, ranky. Greg Foster, thanks for this podcast and all the things you do. My girlfriend broke up with me, and I was Aww. legit in tears. I just started listening to the podcast, and it helped a ton. I'm sorry to hear that, Greg. I'm glad that we are here to help you. Yo, uh, and we have we have been there. A lot of people have been there. Yes. Uh, you are definitely not alone, and uh, there will be brighter days ahead, even if yes. it doesn't seem like there will be. Yeah, we'll, you'll come out on the other side. You're Greg Foster. You got it. You hear about that man, Greg Foster? What a champ. Yeah, he, I love the, uh, Greg Foster. He's a great guy. I, I, you know what? I haven't met a Greg Foster that I don't like. That's true. It's true. I'd also say now we have a little bit more um, uh, uh, pressure on us to be funny all the time. We have to make people laugh in case their girlfriends break up with them. Okay. Uh, 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 banana. Uh, 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 I don't know. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Apparently, yeah, see, we're dancing. <laughs> <laughs> you can see us dancing. We'll dance for the Cameron. rest of the podcast for you. <laughs> <laughs> Banana Man says, okay. okay. Okay, Super Luigi 64. I got to step up my commenting, but I can't always think of something worthwhile to add. In reference to Danny Wells being in the Super Mario Bros. Super Show, oh, I'd hardly call playing Luigi having a bit part, as you called it. Okay, I didn't realize he played <laughs> Luigi, so now I do. I mean, uh, <laughs> so it is Luigi, go. though. I mean, he's, he's kind of second fiddle. <laughs> it's a, nah, his name's not in the thing. <laughs> Isn't that Super Luigi, bros? Give me a break. Cole Papadakis, this is probably the best Penguin episode you guys are going to get. Like, There's like one or two more that have him as the main antagonist, and they're really not very good. Thanks, Cole. Scrudge. Scrudge. Petition for Veronica Vreeland to be known as some other lady. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? Okay. Uh, Dylan Pollock. You guys would know Taxi. It had Danny DeVito and Christopher Lloyd in it, too. Yep. Uh, so this is the episode you guys would have erased, it seems. <laughs> Yay, thanks for reading out about the podcast, and thanks to Scotty Cameron for commenting and listening to the first episode. Yeah, go listen to Dylan Pollock's podcast. Yeah. Movies to watch before you die. Uh, Serum Lake. Well, I liked Birds of a Feather. Sure, it's no Two-Face Part 1, my favorite, but I enjoyed it. It's certainly light years ahead of I've Got Batman in My Basement. That truly is the drizzling shits. <laughs> oh, my Ugh. God. I don't want to think about that. <laughs> Noah O. Oh, it's a shame there are no good Penguin episodes because I think it's a pretty good take on the character, but his episodes are so low on my ranking, they're in the basement. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I've never... I've uh, penguin like, in, in my basement. basement. I've never mentally considered the Penguin like lower than any other Joker, Riddler, whatever, but his episodes just have not been... Holding up. Though the Riddler's ones haven't so far either. <laughs> uh, Wishbone. I wish I were a penguin so I could fly away from this episode. <laughs> well, that's not how that works. <laughs> uh, Maddie wants to know the recipe for your uh, vegetable uh, sloppy joes. So, oh, get get on that. Okay, I can uh, I can I can make the connection. <laughs> okay. <laughs> or unless you want me to just like. Oh no! I don't. Yeah, just shout it on the podcast or right? just get Alora to scream it. Alora. Oh, she might have left. <laughs> oh, left? Just gone forever. Gone? Shoot. Not in our hearts. Oh, well. <laughs> you'll, you'll find out later, Maddie. Okay, uh, we've arrived at KM's comment. James, I think you could have read my long comment. If you've read it, this episode would have been something like an hour and 30 minutes as usual. But instead, this is one hour episode we got. I won't rec re comment that whole thing, but I have to copy and paste some parts of it. Please read these this time. You're not the boss of me, KM. I will read some of this, okay? Uh, to answer Dylan's questions about casting Kevin Conroy on a new DC Cinematic Universe, I would have cast him as Grey Ghost. Adam West was 64 in Grey Ghost episode, and Conroy is 66 now. Yeah, that's actually a pretty good idea. Keep keep the Grey Ghost chain going with whoever's Batman next. <laughs> the previous, the, the, the more iconic, older Batman. 
Uh, Robin's Reckoning is my absolute favorite episode up to this point. I've seen some people were unsatisfied with part two, but I like it. In part one, Batman was too obsessed with hunting Zuko, but he realized he should have gotten give his attention to Dick instead. In present day, Dick is in the same situation. He's way too obsessed to hunt down Zuko, but in the end he realizes he should choose friendship of Batman instead of revenge, and thus bringing the story to a full circle. Animation of part one is much better than part two, but that doesn't mean part two looks bad. Overall, I don't think part two tops part one, but is a fitting finale that finishes the story perfectly fine. I guess I can agree. I just, I don't know what I would have wanted it to be, but <laughs> it just felt a little bit nothing, I guess. Agreed. Compared to part one. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll read this part also, KM, okay? And then, and then we'll move on. James, you mentioned you watched original Ben 10 live action movie with Maddie. Now is the perfect time to share my origin story. KM from this week here, Robin's Reckoning, is an even more perfect time because part one has voice actor of Grandpa Max in it. I think I might be the only only Dylan Pollock sock puppet account that started listening to this podcast without seeing all the DCAU. I haven't watched them when I was a kid either. I don't remember exactly, but probably I started listening when I was in later parts of Batman the Animated Series. I started listening on Perchance to Dream. So how did I find the podcast? Like most people, I found it via Watchtower Database. Aww. But how did I find Watchtower Database without seeing the DCAU? I found the channel via the Ben 10 video that Maddie did. Actually, that's pretty that's cool. That's awesome. Uh, Way to go, Maddie. Yeah. And when that video aired, I haven't seen any of the DCAU. I have heard of Batman Beyond, Batman the Animated Series, Justice League Unlimited, but I didn't know these are in the same universe, etc. So I decided watching the DCAU because it seemed cool. I finished JLU last month. My comments wouldn't be here if it wasn't for that Ben 10 video and my Ben 10 fanboyness. Uh, also, my favorite iterations of Ben 10 are Alien Force and Ultimate Alien. Those two have DCAU writers and directors like Dan Reba, Butch Lukic, Dwayne McDuffie, and Matt Wayne at most episodes. I had looked some of them up before seeing that video and that had affected my decision too, but I'm glad I stumbled upon the Ben 10 video. You guys introduced me to some of the best superhero content outside of the comics. So did you or Maddie? watch Ben 10 Alien Force yet. I think you two will really like some episodes, especially the ones from DCAU people. I don't think either of us have watched that. I mean, I haven't. I don't think I have. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, we're aware of the people that worked on it, so I'm sure it'll be uh, much better than <laughs> the original Ben 10 <laughs> show, because that was not so great. But that's actually really cool that you found the channel from the Ben 10 video. Don't tell Maddie that, even though they're listening. Because <laughs> that means they'll make more Ben, more, uh, ben 10 videos. Uh, Batgirl, fangirl. I don't know what I want to know the resolution to more. Keen's court case or Robin's reckoning part D. So then <laughs> the award for the most stressed out, angriest extortionist goes to, drum roll please, Tony Zuko, a.k.a. Billy Marin, Simon Dirk, Sid the Squid, Killer Coburn, Punky Lesh. I found it funny how seemingly oblivious the rest of his gang was to his plight. They weren't treading on eggshells around him they just didn't seem to care uh, yeah they were just kind of like boss don't worry about it like the whole time uh is it just me or is batman super competent and bad you know what in these flashbacks and a clumsy goof in present day <laughs> yeah that's what we're saying yeah he's gotten especially lazy. in this one he just falls through the roof yeah uh, i'm still not sure how he twisted his knee falling shoulder first through the ceiling maybe he did it standing up <laughs> uh, he's just getting old again yeah, just just standing up he just oh shit <laughs> like he just turned too fast or something. My dad just twisted his knee by turning too fast, so I think that that's a viable thing. Age. Uh, Who needs it? Batman turned 55 in this episode. Or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a missed opportunity maybe to see Robin drive through some empty cardboard boxes in an alleyway or smash through a pane of glass carried by two glaciers across the street. <laughs> yeah, there was just a lot of just like, parkour, and he's just doing a thing yeah. just to get there. <laughs> no, no fruit carts or anything. Uh, a keen yet slightly downbeat podcast, guys. Don't worry, I still enjoyed it. Yeah, the penguin one. Uh, five stars and five kind of creepy merry-go-rounds. <laughs> <laughs> Bikinon. It's crazy how Dinner for Schmucks ripped off this classic BTAS episode. Steve Carell as the Penguin was an inspired casting decision. Question for fellow Pollockians. Is this episode the start of the Yappy Dude's basement era? Ooh. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> Almost certainly. The past 50 episodes were on the other side of episode 50, and it just goes downhill. I think the whole of Yappy Dudes can be considered the basement area. It's era. It's part of the charm, says Jarlid97. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, I guess. Uh, Wednesday 209. I watched your Batman Harley Quinn Will It Cannon video, and holy shit, it was fucking amazing. Thank you. 
Uh, Maddie's speech near the end of the video was top tier godless. Uh, this was one of the very few pieces of media that actually make me think and question everything about the media I love. <laughs> That's good. I, I really love that Maddie's uh, closing statement speech uh, is getting so much praise uh, because it is really good, but Maddie will just laugh their ass off every time because they wrote that extremely high. <laughs> 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 and then I like, I like, mildly edited it like i only switched around like a couple words or whatever it's mostly exactly what they wrote so it's pretty funny it is good though you're a fantastic person and i can't wait uh how the story continues in zeta month have a super yappy day thank you for the praise on that i'm glad that it's it's work it's working for a lot of people uh it's it's not it's getting we all of our goals nowadays are just get it past ten thousand views and it did that in like three days i think uh, which was much faster than the previous two story videos. So it's cool. It's cool. Uh, keep watching it. Keep sharing sharing it and doing all the things. Uh, last two comments. James Royster. Man, I remember this episode being so much better than it was. I had a whole comment drafted and ready about how there is an actually good Penguin episode, but it will have to stay in drafts now one day. <laughs> And Mark Aquino. I suppose it's true what they say. Society is to blame. High society. Damn, Penguin was out here saying we live in a society before any chud on the internet. <laughs> giving, I just watched that Seinfeld episode <laughs> that we live in a society. <laughs> they're in like a Chinese restaurant and no, they're never being sat. Like everyone gets to be sat before them. Everyone that comes through uh -oh. is pretty good. Uh, given how this originally aired between both parts of Robin's reckoning, I keep imagining Robin during the events of this just puttering slowly on his motorcycle <laughs> and muttering under his breath, your ass is grass, Zuko. Your ass is grass, Zuko. <laughs> Anywho, sorry, folks, that I thought Birds of a Feather was... But I thought Birds of a Feather was a decent episode, in my opinion, bolstered by Paul Williams' delightful performance as a penguin and some legit good animation from Dong Yang. Despite what Uncle Jam Jam thinks about penguin episodes, I still enjoyed this overall. And that's okay. You can like it if you want. I just did. All the best to our hosts, Jamie Old Shoe and brother Brian Brick Broderick Brushy Brushy Breaking Brecken Myers bro Briochness using brochures but brimming with brilliance and braggadocio Brohemian Rhapsody. <laughs> Brohemian, I'm so sorry. Uh, praise to our Lord and Savior Dylan Pock, his disciple Scarloy, one Batgirl, Fangirl, Scotty Cameron, Wednesday 209, Tip Tap, Ricard Keen Machine, Banana Man, etc., and all the listeners of this yappy community of ours. I'm glad to just be a small part of that. Seriously, each of you are great and never let anyone tell you otherwise. Can't wait for part two of Robin's Reckoning for Realsies this time, where the college aged wonder is aiming to give Tony Zuko more than just the old George McFly special. <laughs> Until then, smoke bomb! <laughs> a bunch of smoke. <laughs> Thank you, Mark Aquino. I, I appreciate that also since you're always the first, a.k.a. last comment that I read, uh, we always have this, like, praise to our Lord and Savior, Dylan Pollock. Yeah. <laughs> just, we're, like, closing out the <laughs> comments here. That's great. I love it. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Uh, if you want to reach out to us like the fire hand at the end of the Cat in the Claw Part 2, you can email us at podcast at watchtowerdatabase.com and hope that it doesn't send you a thing saying that it couldn't send it to me. <laughs> You can also send a voice message to uh, the other place, anchor.fm slash batwhacking. Whacking? Whacking. <laughs> batwhacking. Just whack an old bat everywhere you want to. Batwhacking. All right? <laughs> Tell your bat friends. Batwhacking. Jump jung on the batwhacking. <laughs> jung, do whatever jung you, on the batwhacking? Yeah, just do whatever you want. I don't care anymore. Do you want to know what the next episode's called? I don't know. Batwhacking? Right. <laughs> it's called, yeah, Blind as a Bat. Whack it. Blind as a it's bat. It's called Blind as what a Bat. Mm-hmm. Hmm. That's the sound of the bat. Ah, <laughs> it's a bat wing. <laughs> ah, there's a man breathing loudly in the sky. <laughs> I I don't know. Blind as a bat. I mean, I feel like something bad is gonna happen to Batman. And I'm trying mm -hmm. to think of some super villain that has a like you know, blind, blinding blind, machine. Br blind ray. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be, uh, uh, what's his spiral eyeball man? What is it? Vertigo. Spiral man. But, but blind version. Yeah. <laughs> it's my blind ray. Is this, will hit you, Batman. Is, is blind as a bat, uh, a Riddler episode? Why do you think it's a Riddler episode? Because it's like a kind of like pseudo saying almost could be a pun. You might be subconsciously thinking of in Batman Forever, 
uh, <laughs> the Riddler says that. He says, like, like Batman asks him a riddle uh, that the answer is blind as a bat, and then he says that. But I don't know if... But the answer is no. It's not. Really Shoot! <laughs> My perfect streak. You want to keep? Do you want to keep guessing who like a who like the main villain is? Sorry, Kane. Because <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, I feel like the, the the throwaway vote is Joker. No. Oh, really? I, I have mm-hmm. no idea then. Well, let me just say that there's no good episode with this character. <laughs> We're not doing another Penguin episode. It, it is, yeah, already. Oh, come on. <laughs> We're just trying to get through the goddamn show, oh, man. Oh, <laughs> God. What if we just stop going in the controversial air date order and maybe just go to Justice League or whatever? <laughs> go in whatever order skips the Penguin yeah. episode. And then we can just finish out the DCAU by watching every sp- uh penguin, <laughs> penguin episode <laughs> in a row <laughs> yeah we're watching the controversial skip all the penguin episodes and then watch them all at once at the end <laughs> just oh you've watched all the really good stuff and now you get to watch the, all the penguin episodes in a row <laughs> just makes no sense at all wow okay <laughs> well yeah. penguin episode buckle up everyone yeah what we'll do next episode is we'll inject ourselves with uh, uh, adrenaline shots before we yeah. do, before we do the episodes so that we're just wired. <laughs> How are we supposed to do this podcast, Brian? You, we're just so tired. We keep watching Penguin episodes. Okay. All right, everybody. Thanks. Thanks for listening. <laughs> we'll see thanks you next time. With us. Bird blind is a bad. I almost said birds of a feather because in my head they're the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Why oh did we do God. everything? You were right, you know, not bringing me along. You knew I'd take it too personally. It wasn't that, Robin. It wasn't that at all. Zuko's taken so much, caused you so much pain. I couldn't stand the thought that he might take you, too. Come on, partner. It's been a long night.